on Kyle Ofozo and how does his absence uh, affect the team this year? And There's his multiple lives. I don't have an update for you further uh, on Kyle. Um, mult it'll be a little bit of a story line the his absence at different times of the year, but uh, it's it's not uh, it's a similar storyline to not having Jack for the first 21 games and having Kyle out for uh, some time and uh, Vander Kane being out for some time. It, it aff affected our team not having the best players on the ice for a portion of games. Um, I think it probably affected us more at the end of the year without with Kyle's absence of his illnesses. We were still in, uh, well behind in the chase at that point in time, but uh, he's uh, become a big uh, leader on our team and a big part of our team and one we missed uh, not only on the ice, but his presence in the room when he when he wasn't with us. One thing that CBA allowed you to do is lengthen on this. Can this go until next season, or would you expect him back? I don't have any in further information for you on that. Again, every team deals with uh, injuries, and we, you know, we can talk about those injuries and the effect they had in our team. I thought our team, um, you know, through the first few months without Eichel and and having missed Kyle for uh, a good portion with with his injuries, I thought our team did a a pretty good job of fighting through that and and uh, still winning some hockey games. But I think the More to the effect is Kyle's presence in our room, and I think he's he's uh, he's developed into a, and become a, a big leader in that dressing room. And uh, there's a big big part missing when when he's not there with that leadership, and and uh, that's one we <coughs> just hoping to recover well from in this uh, sickness and and get get which is a uh, summer long now, but. Uh, Back for our team in the fall and being that for our, this this group in the fall. Yeah, I've always believed that coaches coach, players play. But as the league gets younger and younger guys are more prominent, how much does a coach, and you in particular, have to come and kind of meet the minds more of your players than maybe you used to in the previous days? <coughs> well, I'm I'm a lot of my. Uh, Coaching experience is drawn on the olden times, and not wanting it to be like that when I become a coach. So um, I kind of feel like uh, you need to have an open communication to the next generation, <coughs> be in communication with, and get on the same page uh, with. I don't want to say a new generation, but the the players uh, that are in the league now, compared to the way maybe I was coached uh, when I was a player. The perception is that maybe the narrative is that the team doesn't like the system. Um, what would your response be to that? That some of your top players don't like the system they're playing, and how do you, in the off season, broach that and come together? Um, I don't. I don't know the narrative. Uh, the we are have conversations with the players and about the system. Not, you know, throughout the time we've um, we've uh, believe we're we believe we are on the same page and have a good understanding of that system and and how we play and. Um, so I, I feel like, um, like so there's not uh, there's not a, a there's not a disconnect. They're they're a part of the conversation and a part of how we play, and and uh, that's uh, something we all have all have ownership in. Dan, players talked about accountability and taking themselves accountable. How 
much falls on the coaching staff uh, for what you know this team took a step back this year? Well, you, I, I uh, you know, my goal uh, coming to the Buffalo Sabres was uh, to. Uh, it's going to be a process, but be in the process of developing a, a winning t- culture and a winning team, and and uh, I think we're in that process right now. But it's one I have to be judged on, and uh, we fell short of where I think uh, we thought we could be, hope we could be, and I I take full responsibility for that. How so why, why is it? And, and just is is this rebuilding for some team? Or maybe circumstances. I mean, why does it seem more difficult rebuilding here in Buffalo right now? I'm I'm not uh, I'm not comparing from here to there and uh, or any other place. This is where where we're at, and I think we we knew we were going to be in this process. We wasn't going to be a one day thing, and and uh, we're in. Year two of that process would it like to be f- farther down the road. Did we misstep in some cases, or maybe perhaps we did, but it's still uh, still something we're going forward with. Robin earlier in the year talked about sometimes a lack of respect toward the coaches, and even today he said it's up to us to do what we're told. He really didn't. How frustrated were you at times by what it seemed like players not responding? We see practice. We saw what you were trying to do, and then the games would happen, and guys would be off doing what they were doing. I mean, was this more frustrating for you than most seasons you've had in that respect? I think uh, you know. I we can't expect to continue to to do the same things and this um, do it the same way and um, and have a better result, and that change. Uh, it's it's got to change, and that change comes with some some un, uncomfortable times and some unhappy people at different times. And but that's something that we're going to keep pushing on and and keep pushing for our team because we have to we have to know that we are, we have to change if we're going to develop into a, a team that we think we can be, which is a a winning team. Well, there's, uh, you know, I think uh, exceed expectations. There's several players that uh, exceeded expectations. Uh, Rasmus, uh, I think, improved in uh, in numerous areas in his game. Uh, Jack Eichel uh, showed huge. Uh, gains in his game, both uh, with the puck and without the puck. Uh, keep going down the list. I mean, a, a, a few surprises and, and Evan Rodriguez and him stepping in and playing center for a team will carry a, uh, is certainly a, a surprise and a guy who grabbed a lot more than you might have anticipated for him at the beginning of the year. Um, you know, I thought, I don't know what the Again, I I thought uh, Robin Leonard showed uh, this year that he can be a, a top end goalie and and uh, stepped into that for our team and played 59 games for us. He only played half a season, but with Larson, the way that he played that first half, he one of those guys, and maybe was a little surprising. Yeah, I was surprising. You're trying to grade the the level of surprise. You know, Johan, I thought at the end of last year. Um, Really took strides in his game and what he was for a team, and then stepped into that uh, for us at the beginning of this year and, and through his 36 games. And you know, again, you're talking about uh, an, another guy you're missing uh, at the end, and, and one of the reasons why you're missing him because he was a, a pretty significant player for us. Five on five, uh, the power play was so good, five on five scoring just really wasn't there. Why, I guess, can a power play be so good? Five on five. It's just, it's good. I'm tripping over my words here. Yeah, we we uh, I think five on five. We you know our goal differential is was not um, 
very good. And uh, we need to score more goals to win hockey games, and we, we got to get them. Fi uh, you know, we power play was excellent, and uh, they did a great job almost throughout the year, and in a lot of times carried uh, carried our team on an offensive standpoint, getting a lot of goals from our power play. And um, you know, I thought we we came by it pretty slowly and pretty poorly uh, in the first half of the year without Jack. And you know, I think our goals for were. Um, up 1.7 or 1.68 without uh, Jack the first 60 or 21 games, and then with Jack back in our lineup, increased uh, almost a full goal by the end of the year to to being a little bit closer to where it needs to be to to be a successful team. And and you know I think uh, not having Jack there was a big part of that. From a couple more. I just reiterate about uh, our team and that um, we need to show a lot of growth and a lot of maturity in, in our whole game. And uh, no question of Anders, even strength, goal scoring, tops in the league, and the time that he played, especially if you give him two or three weeks of a leeway after coming back from the ridge, rim rib injury, which I think he still was dealing with when he came back, but from December on, um, you know, a top five on five goal scorer in the league, he was he was uh, that for us all for the second half of the season. Dan, has, any, has anyone told you you're going to be the coach going forward yet, or are you just business as usual? I said I have had conversations in the last, just as I always have had with him in the last little bit. and. And uh, going forward. When you look at the opportunities, you have guys who are expected to be here for a long time. Connect your number to success and more than the guys Did you say power play? Yeah, I think uh, I think we made progress two years ago with the power play and the group of guys, and I think you see the progression of it into this year with uh, Rasmus. I think took another step on the his puck poise and puck play and on the power play and and uh, Jack and um, Ryan on their on that big power play I think um, with the help of some fans last uh, summer I got it straight that you should be on their offsides and uh, I think that power play showed throughout the year sometimes without Jack sometimes with Ryan we had different pieces and different spots um, and showed it uh, could be a top power play and, and I think it can only and should progress going forward. What goes into, uh, what goes into allowing the most shots per game and how do you Playing in the D zone um, and I think one of the possession over the blue line um, is about another four tenths of a shot chance of a shot on being on net and that's something that we